Hey, welcome back to The Ready State. This is our mobilization of the week. What we're gonna talk about is a classic staple in the pantheon of good mobility exercises and certainly one of our signatures, which is the couch stretch. Now, originally we conceived of this as we needed a, a way of getting some lower leg flexion with some hip extension at the same time. Because what we're finding is that, hey, that being able to extend the hip powerfully is really, and not stand up out of a squat, being able to run, being able to cut, being able to jump, those were really the hallmarks of good athleticism. And what we were seeing is that our athletes were having symptoms and features of having incomplete hip extension and certainly just being stiff here. So we came up with the couch stretch because we had young people who could do it on the couch while they were watching TV. Ergo, the couch stretch was born. So take a look at this. What we've got here is I've got a, a mat set up against the wall, and this is just to make for comfort. But the key here, and one of the magics of the couch stretch, is I don't have to be actually be on my patella. I do not need to mash my kneecap into the ground. What I get to do in this position is actually get on top of the kneecap. So I'm right above the kneecap. If you want to put this pad in for a little more comfort, that's great. And what I'm doing here with the toe pointed is that I'm lengthening this whole anterior fascia. So I'm taking the whole line. And sometimes we forget some that when I pull on this, I can impact the tissues through the whole system. So I'm not just trying to mobilize my quads and hips. I'm trying to take this whole anterior line fascia and see if I can put that into context for my body, get my brain to appreciate these positions. So that toe point is very important, knee in the back. And the first thing I'm trying to do here is recognize that, hey, this is, looks and smells like a classic stretch, but it's not because we're getting the brain involved. And the people who got, kind of brought this to our attention were the brilliant people at, uh, at the World Center for PNF at Kaiser Vallejo. And that's proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, which means, let's use your brain, to get involved with this process, to change the length tension relationship of the musculature we're trying to impact. So first order of business here is to do some contract relax holds and to be able to get my butt to be able to squeeze. So what I'm working on in this position for starters is trying to drive my knee into the ground, take a big breath, end range isometric by driving my knee into the ground and flexing my foot into the wall for four seconds. And then I'm slowly gonna come off tension and relax that glute and see if I can just be uh, comfortable in this position. Keeping in mind that I need to be able to take a huge breath in this position in order to fully own this. And as I start to pull on the fascia, as I start to pull on my psoas, I start to pull on the iliacus, I'm gonna have these demands on the diaphragm that are gonna be real. And what you'll see is that as we start to pull and tug on some of these anterior structures, my breath volume is gonna go a little lower. So I'm gonna really work on Big breath here so that I can take that breath in this extension position. So this is position one. Again, hallmarks are that I have good glute control, I can squeeze and I'm active in this position, maintain my breath. Position number two is coming into a high kneel. So suddenly now, don't just jump right up and go back to wall because what I get to do here is I'm working on a little bit more extension bias. So I've got a lower leg inflection, upper leg now I get to, or this higher aspect of the hip, I get to push into extension. So notice that if you wiggle around here, you'll find some different positions. I'm trying to keep the foot pretty straight. That's gonna put the biggest load in that fascia. Again, can I squeeze the butt, drive the hip into the ground, so that I'm doing this end range isometric. Lower legs in flexion, but I get to really be active here and teach my brain that this is a position that I value. So when I do that contract, relax, I'm temporarily inhibiting the musculature. So big breath in, contract for four seconds, hold for four seconds, exhale. That gives me a chance for my brain to let, inhibit some of the musculature, let it go so I can reset that, let, that resting length, uh, length tension relationship in the musculature. I can also noodle around and find the corner, find the ray where I feel restricted. Ultimately, we're trying to become a little bit more upright and sometimes having a position or a block makes this a little bit more effective so you don't immediately go into banana back. So I'm trying to keep my rib cage in. Feels like I'm in flexion, but I'm actually in much more of a neutral position, right? So spine is more mid-range, not flaring the rib cage, which is a simple way of dumping tension in the hip, which is a lot what a lot of us do when we squat or we end up kind of letting that belly hang out. So keep that rib cage in, belly button drawn. Again, how do I know I own this position? I can take a big breath and I still have access to my glutes here. So I can do that contract, relax, big breath in, 
drive knee into the ground, squeezing the butt as hard as I can, making sure that I have access to this position, that it's stable, pushing into this end range now. So I load it up by driving the knee into the wall, push the hip into the ground, and then relax, take a couple breaths. Ultimately, we're trying to get ourselves much more upright, right, where the torso is coming, I'm getting a little pinch from the bottom, but the torso, again, is not into banana back, but rib cage down, pushing further and further back, still have access to the glute, still can take a breath here. So I can do my end range contract, relax, do I have access to the glute? I feel stiff in this line, I don't want the leg to fly out, keep the hip here. What we're looking for, ultimately though, to be totally honest, is to be able to start to bring this front leg into a little bit more flexion. So when I bring this up, it's going to challenge the hip in a much higher order. In fact, what we want you to recognize is that you can start to bring the front leg up a little bit, even if I'm not getting my torso all the way upright. And a lot of athletes who are just slamming their backs to the wall, bellies hanging out, they can't actually access aspects of the tissue that they're trying to change until this leg comes up. So put this leg up on a block, up on a plate. Now repeat that. Do I have access to my glutes? Can I squeeze and drive that leg into the ground? This is the couch stretch and it's all its glory. So see if you can't, at home in the evening, accumulate four or five minutes per side, take as many breaks as you need, maybe just mobilize during the commercial breaks. Ultimately, the couch ends up being a wonderful place to do this, why? It's context, it's soft, it's comfortable, and you can mobilize your hips while you're doing something else. This is the couch stretch.